becoming a crafter or finisher around the rim is one of those things that can unlock so much in your game. Especially if you're not as athletic or if you're not as tall, you're gonna need to find different solutions to finish over taller players at high speeds with contact, all of that. Now, the tough thing is most players don't know how to train this. And it makes sense, especially when you don't have defense, it's tough to work on this skill. So we're gonna get outside the box in this workout. This session will and should challenge you, but I think you guys will benefit a lot from it. Let's get to it. First drill we'll start with here is what I call a creative mic in. So it's like your standard mic in drill. I'm not a big fan of the mic in just because it's so limited, right? You can only do so much. It's pretty easy once you get to a certain point. So we'll keep that same idea, that same principle, but get a little bit more creative with it. So the rule is I can't do the same type of finish twice. You gotta be somewhere different off the backboard with a different release point. All right, I'm still going back and forth side to side, but again, I'm getting creative with it here. Biggest thing to notice here is that I'm missing, right? I want all of these to be challenging. So if I stood here, did my standard mic in, probably end up making 20 in a row, whatever it may be. I'm finding ways to challenge myself. A lot of times finishing is tough to do that because it's so close to the bucket, but that's why we're doing this whole workout. Now here I'm staying close to the rim, but I'm working on finishing going away from the rim. So my goal here is to start in or jump from the paint, so the black area, and finish in the gray area, right? So now I'm kind of fading away. A lot of time if I'm challenging a bigger defender, especially as a smaller guard, it's tough to go into them, which is something we will work on, but I also have to get the touch in the field for going backwards or away from the rim into that layup or floater or fader, whatever you want to call it. So again, try to switch it up a little bit every time, the angle, the speed, the type of finish, but that's the only rule here. Next one here, I'm starting kind of close to the baseline or even toes on the baseline here, if it works for you. I can also step in to make it a little bit easier, but my goal is to jump from a dead stop. So both feet are stationary in place. I can't take a step back and then jump. It's gotta be from right here. So I'm trying to jump backwards, find an angle on the backboard with either hand. And then as I start to get the feel for it, I can step more and more away from that basket to make it more difficult. Now I'm getting creative, same idea here, by facing towards half court now. All right, now I'm jumping across. Again, I want to step back, so it's a tough angle on the backboard. I really have to carry some horizontal momentum into it and finish on the other side of the rim now. Now I'm dribbling in from a different angle every time. So one time's wing, top, corner, whatever it may be, as long as it's a little bit different. Jumping from a little bit further out, so I'm trying to cover ground, jumping off of two feet, and now I'm touching either my shoulder, knee, hip, or foot, and finishing from there, right? This one does seem a little bit weird, right? As you're watching it, you're probably like, yo, what the hell is this? But as you feel it out, you'll see how it challenges you to, again, manipulate that ball into different areas of your frame, right? be able to get up into the air, figure it out. If you have a partner, what you can even do here is have them call right before you jump, hip, knee, foot, shoulder, whatever. Then you have to react, get it up onto the bucket from there. Now just getting a little bit creative with the speed of my strides, and you'll see this a lot these days uh, with guys like Luka Doncic, say, Gildas Alexander. A lot of players who are really starting to manipulate the speed of their strides. And this drill, I'm going to a one-two finish, but it's gotta be a different speed every time, all right? So as I'm dribbling in, maybe the first one I go super slow on this first one, and then a quick second hop into it. Maybe the second one I go really quick on the first one, then super slow, all right? I can also add in different types of finishes, so a scoop, a hook, a little fader. Again, I'm just making it different every time, visualizing that defense and why I'm applying these speeds.
Next one here, I'm going with a no jump finish. So I'm coming in as fast as I can, typically around the wing, but again, you can kind of switch up the angle a bit. I'm going without jumping up onto the rim, right? So instead of my momentum going here and then elevating upwards as I jump, I'm literally just keeping that through that finish or that scoop, all right? So you're gonna feel it. Again, one of those ones that looks kind of easy, but as I'm scooping it up here, I have to control that touch, that momentum as I have super high speed going through that finish. Last one here, I'm really bringing back in that visualization component. So I want you to see everything, right? I want you to feel everything. The speed that it takes you to get to the rim, the contact as you're getting to the rim, all the help defenders and teammates that are on the court, right? It's really gonna help take this drill and beyond to the next level. So your goal here to finish it is to find different jumps that challenge you, right? So I'm typically a left-right jumper. So me going left-right into a finish, a stretch finish is a lot easier, right? What I'm not good at is going right, left, left into a stretch, maybe jumping off the right from further away. So I want you to really work on these footwork orientations into the jump that challenge you. You can get creative with this however you want to do it. But again, I'm really visualizing everything, trying to get into footwork to challenge me into that jump. As always, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Binding Means Basketball for a lot more. And check out the small guard program, which I'll put the link in the description for, which has a lot of finishing work built into it.